Hi, I'm Nick Powell, City Hall Bureau Chief with City and State. Joining me today on City and State TV is Rich Cavallero, the president of Skanska USA Civil. Thanks for joining us today, Rich. Nice to so for those of our viewers who don't know, Skanska is responsible for the construction of the number seven line extension um, in western, the west side of Manhattan, uh, the Second Avenue subway, and the World Trade Center transportation hub. Um, so with that in mind, Rich, uh, I'm curious, and this is something that we've discussed a lot at City and State, there seemed to be in the earlier part of this century, a real boom in subway construction, and now it's it, it seems to have petered out a little bit. What are some of the factors that go into uh, you know these kind of large scale capital subway projects, and why is it why has there been so few in the uh, in recent years? Well, I would say actually it's been a lot. I mean, we have three new lines in New York, and when you measure that against what's happened, say 20 years ago, there's been, there was nothing for many many years. But we've always worked in the subways. I mean, our company's been in the subways for over 75 years. You get used to and understand how to do that work because many times getting to the work is as expensive as actually doing the work. Right. But these are new lines, you know, if you're talking about East Side Access, Seven Lines, Second Avenue, which has really been a, a, a you know, a tremendous boom in, in subway construction. And obviously as board tunnels, uh, again, that's an expertise we have and, and uh, you know, we have three new board tunnels in New York, so it's pretty cool. Now, you, I understand Skanska is also responsible for uh, developing new construction techniques and design techniques to improve and kind of harden uh, the city's, in, city's infrastructure. Now, can you kind of take me through some of those new techniques and, and how it may apply to um, some of the rebuilding going on um, in wake of Hurricane Sandy? Um, there are a couple things going on there. I mean, first thing we try to do is, you know, you try to be, you try to engineer solutions like, let's take a basic one, safety, right? A lot of times construction is very dangerous and, and, you know, it's construction, not war. We don't want people to get hurt. So we'll engineer into our work safety. It could be tie-off points. It could be a host of different things. It could be walkways put on on the ground and not in the air. So that, that in itself is innovative, and it doesn't come out in, in, in terms of what the final product is, but it comes out in keeping people safe. So that's very important to us. Um, of course, innovation is always trying to use a permanent element in a temporary cons position. That, that's an innovative approach. I mean, we, we kind of pride ourselves on trying to find a better better mousetrap for the jobs that we build. And they are so complicated, it does lend itself to that. Un unlike maybe a road widening project, which is, you can only get so innovative there if you're widening a road versus, and you know, when you dig in very deep holes next to very tall buildings, lots of things can happen. So you can, you get opportunities to get smarter as you build this work. Are there specific uh, ideas that have been floated uh, that maybe the city might put to use? I, I mean, something is, I mean, there's been, I, I've heard ideas as large scale as, um, I guess, kind of balloons, balloon type equipment. So it's to put in the, in the subway tunnels to prevent flooding and then it, as simple as moving boilers and, and vital uh, building infrastructure off the basement level. But so uh, what, what are some specific solutions? That as, you, as you talk about the sandy stuff, I mean, mm -hmm. that, that's what you're talking about. The, the balloons are really to seal the tunnels in case of a, an event. I mean, that, that's, that's really a very interesting because the whole idea of, of real hardening is not possible. It's really resiliency that's the issue. So what does resiliency mean? It means manage the event to cause the least amount of damage and get back in business as quick as possible. And some really good things happened during Sandy too that, that, that show you why that, that's true. And, and some not so good things, but, but we, we have to learn something from it. Um, you know, if you put a 20 foot wall around Manhattan and said, okay, now we're gonna stop any storm that'll ever hit Manhattan. Unfortunately, the water's gonna go somewhere. It's gonna bury New Jersey then. So it's really, again, that's, not, that's really not a logical solution. So a so, so more uh, logical solution is maybe can we find ways to channel water, say, let tunnel, let, let's just say we let tunnels fill up with water, but we're prepared to, cl to clean them out as quick as possible and get traffic back in. But what that does, it, it, becomes a, it becomes a holding cell for that water in lieu of, you know, again, burying buildings or, or transit systems. Um, the MTA, they did a, an amazing job. They, they, I, we always know the storm's coming. It's never a surprise, right? They got their equipment to high ground. They took their equipment out of their sensitive electronic equipment out of the tunnels. Storm came, flooded their, their facilities, receded, 
They were able to get back in there, get the equipment reinstalled, and they were back in business. In fact, I think the MTA was ready to go before there was power. Mm -hmm. They did a very nice job. And again, it's about being resilient and being able to manage the event in lieu of really believing we can stop it, because you can't. Right. Now, have you had any dialogue with, with city officials on putting forth some of these solutions? I mean, does it help or does it hinder that, that this, the mayor hasn't really named a, port, a point person yet for the Sandy recovery, or are the, is, the, or is the talks ongoing? I mean, the, the, the governor has been. So mm -hmm. the governor's been involved. He had the 2100 commission, which had a bunch of recommendations, um, many of which are the ones I'm talking about. Also, the other big uh, recommendation came out of there, which is, which is basic but, but, but important, is, is having a coordinated uh, response. Like a, a perfect example would be, so we were working for the Port Authority at the World Trade Center. There was 165 million gallons of water in the basement, and we were able to pull pumps from all parts of the country, and we got that thing dewatered in a week. The, the question you have to ask yourself is, was that the right use of those pumps? Should they have been somewhere else? Because you know, resources become a huge issue in that kind of event. You know, we did not have power, so they had, you know, it had to be gasoline pumps, but not electric pumps. Blah blah blah. So that that that's important. I think the city can, could really that that's something we could do better, and we definitely could do better if we had a coordinated event and made sure those resources went where most vital. Let's get the, you know, let's get the tunnels open, let's get the subways open, those kind of things. Now I want to shift gears a little bit um, and talk about affordable housing. Obviously, Skanska is a huge uh, real estate commercial uh, or residential commercial um, development company. So, I mean, where does where does your company fit into the mayor's plan to create and preserve 200,000 units of affordable housing? I mean, we, we, we certainly would love to participate in that. It depends how it gets um, uh, procured. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if it comes in big pieces, we have a better opportunity to, to participate. We also would love to be in it kind of a, um, instead of the city going off and designing these things and putting them out to bid, it, it kind of a collaborative event with the, uh, a collaborative contract with the contractors. Many, many agencies are using that now. The guys who really understand what things cost, get us in the room together with the designer, let us come up with an efficient solution because we understand cost is a big driver of affordable housing, of course. So. So the opportunity to get in there with the designer, come out with a really, you know, lean construction uh, solution, and then hopefully have the opportunity to go build it. Is the mayor's proposal to allow developers to build higher with the incentive that, or with the added um, ability to add residential units to those developments, does that incentivize, would that maybe provide a carrot for real estate developers as far as you can see? For sure. I mean, uh, obviously, the more, more housing units you get on a piece of property is, but still, there's, there's, there's cost in the, in the actual infrastructure, you know, the, the building, a physical building itself. I mean, that amortizes the cost of the land over, obviously, more units, but, but there's still, you know, I, depending on what, what affordable means, right. which I, I really don't know what, what, what the bogey is right now for that. And uh, I understand that uh, we talked a little bit, I mentioned the Second Avenue subway, that project looks like it's on target to be completed, I understand, what, in the next year and a half, maybe? Depending about the overall program, the pieces we're doing will be done. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think the overall program is, I want to say 17, but I, I, could, I could have that data off a year because we, we don't have the final contract. Uh, we, dr we drove the tunnel from 63rd to 196th. No, and uh, we're doing the 86th Street station, but there are other contractors on the line that will come after us. And what are, are there other any other um, large-scale projects that Skanska is working on right now that uh, you wanted to, to mention? I mean, the, 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 the most exciting one in the city right now, obviously, is the P3, the Public-Private Partnership the Port Authority is entertaining at LaGuardia. I mean, that is a mega project. It, it will... It will, it will stretch an organization because you have to have a lot of pieces. You know, you have to be a developer. You have to be able to invest in the project with your own money. Um, and there's not been a lot of PPs, P's in the city. Only one, of course, the Gothels Bridge. So uh, that one is, and, and we can throw a rock at it from our office. So we would, we're certainly uh, excited about that project. Obviously, the other one is the Kosciuszko Bridge is one we're excited to hear if we, you know, we can win it because we're a big bridge builder here in New York. Um, so those are probably the two of the most high-profile, exciting projects out there. As far as you can tell, how or what is what is the condition of our of our bridges? Are they, uh, you know, I mean, are are we looking at, you know, another level of aging in infrastructure there, or is the or are they in you know pretty good shape 
as far as you know handling the capacity of, of you know motor vehicles that they do I, I would say in general New York has made a, a, a good uh, the city mm -hmm. has made a good uh, a major investment in their in their bridges as well as the Port Authority I mean I think as it compares to the rest of the country I think New York's are probably in better shape but I think where the where the issues are probably on the smaller overpass type bridges uh, and, and I think there's probably some really sad infrastructure out there that needs to be that needs to be addressed. Right, Rich Cavallaro, president of Skanska USA Civil, thank you for joining us today.